Okay, good afternoon. We'll start with the TV as usual and Gary Cotswell. Gary? Hello, Thomas. Hi. Long time no speak. Absolutely. Missed you. Uh, can you give us the injury update, please? Injury update. Um, Kova is out for the game, his ligament injury, and uh, hopefully not longer than two weeks. Hopefully. Two weeks can be a long time for us <laughs> in, in terms of games, so hopefully make it as soon as possible, but this is the kind of time frame. Kalem Hatsunodoi out for the game, Ben Chilwell out for the game, and um, some players in doubt which we need to be examining, but hopefully the rest is okay. Do you have any kind of uh, latest news in terms of when you might expect to see those two back, Kalem Hatsunodoi, uh, maybe, uh, will we see Ben before the end of the season or is it not worth it? On the pitch, a uh, Premier League match? No, I don't think we will rush this in the end of the season. Uh, Ben will now be in the in the in the transition to to join uh, academy training with the youth to to have team training, but not on the physicality level like with with us. So this will be his next steps in the next weeks, and hopefully he can join our training at the end of the season. This is the plan for him, but no no matches on this kind of level. And then for Kalim, it's a bit yeah, it, it it's a bit like day by day. Um, and, and still he's not possible to join team training. Just, just one looking back at, at the weekend, you said after the, the victory in the semi-final that you didn't have revenge on, on your mind in terms of the final against Liverpool. Mason Mount um, said, yes. said differently. <laughs> Is it, is it good that the players feel yeah, like that? Good. Yeah, good. If, if they, of course, we, we, we feel it. It was so close. It was not like last season or like two years ago. It was like it was only some weeks ago. That we lost at the same in the same stadium in a in a in a pretty similar occasion. Now it's an even bigger cup, and the even more traditional cup. Of course, it 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 has these similarities, and of course, it 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 seems like you can you can you can come back. It's what what it is about in sports. If you if you lost against the team uh, in 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 such a short notice, it feels like a little bit. Hey, come on, let's let's. Let's turn things around pretty quickly, and then if you call it revenge or not revenge, that doesn't matter. But but we all have this competitive feeling uh, in us. It's clear. Um, similarly, I guess in the league, you're, you're probably not going to reach second now. Certainly, no one probably be, who was a betting man would bet on you being second. And it looks like the, the teams competing for fourth don't even want fourth because none of them are winning the, the games that matter. So <laughs> they're not going to reach third for sure. So is that difficult to keep the players? In? In the I'm a bit, I'm a bit afraid that I don't maybe share your opinion about what's sure and what's not. It's not sure that we don't become second, and sure we don't become fourth. I'm not so sure about it, as long the season is not finished. So we will, will fight hard. I think we have a crucial four matches coming in another short period of time, within like uh, two weeks, with uh, Arsenal, West Ham, Man United, and Everton, two home, two away. Crucial matches for us for like giving given the task where we want to be and what we want to achieve. So this is where the focus goes. I think it is. I agree with you. I think it's a it's a big challenge in in terms of physical uh, um, physical challenge, but also mentally. To now uh, dive in, in 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 the next competition and in the in the main competition, uh, Premier League, and uh, given the fact that it seems like. Things are pretty safe, but the things can turn so so quickly with the schedule. So um, we want to play a physical game again tomorrow. Uh, we want to demand it again from the team, and it is. I, I accept it that it is uh, very demanding and uh, very challenging for 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 everybody. But at the same time, it's uh, just can repeat. It's what you sign up for uh, when you when you sign up for Chelsea, and um, we demand special things because we want to be a special group, and we have the trust in the players that they can overcome again and 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 compete with teams who are like maybe who are better, pr um, who have more days to prepare, who have less less games in their in their legs, and and still it's it's. Uh, it's on us to push the to push the standards and push the level. Two, two weeks ago, um, Timo Werner was on the periphery of the, of the side, the starting lineup. Now he's, you said that he's trained and played his way into your thinking in terms of the starting lineup. Yeah. Could, could that be an inspiration for, for Romelu? <laughs> Every any, anything, but I don't think that he really needs uh, in, inspiration. What he needs is is. Uh, um, is is maybe that one moment, that one spark, and um, 
I told you that he would normally have been uh, maybe a natural starter in the game against against uh, Crystal Palace from terms also of, of, of the amount of minutes that Kai Havertz played now and the, the amount of physicality that Kai gives into the matches recently. But after a period of injury, he was he, he, he lacks simply like this 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 the stiffness and and the the fitness for matches, uh, which is not like I don't point the finger on him. It's it's just a, it's just a fact, and maybe it's not even his or it's not even his fault. It's just like this, and it's in the crucial time of the season where you need to have a certain rhythm. And if you see our matches. And, and compare the difference between Brentford, Real Madrid, and then uh, Southampton, Real Madrid, um, um, in like in a short period of time, you see the huge amount of effort that we suddenly put in to become again uh, a, a winning team. And, and this is what we need. And um, so it goes from there. And then, like I said, Romelu should have maybe had a goal against Real Madrid. He should have had one. It's a bit uh, missing, missing the luck, but it's an option that he starts. If he starts, we need we need all that he has physically. Maybe he cannot play 90 minutes, so just put everything out there in the first 60. Maybe it's an option. And just finally for me, sorry, the, the twice weekly, sometimes three times weekly <laughs> ownership update. Yeah. Any, any news for us? From me? Absolutely not. I'm sorry. Olivia, POP. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Um, it's going to be the first time that since everything happened at the club that Chelsea will only be season ticket holders at the game tomorrow against Arsenal. You've, you've mentioned atmosphere before. How important are those almost 25,000 fans going to be in terms of making it feel like Stamford Bridge is full? Repeat it again, please. It's the first time that... So season ticket holders yeah, um, are in the stadium. They're the only ones, because obviously a lot of the tickets were sold before everything happened. But now it's just going to be season ticket holders oh, at Stamford okay. Bridge. So oh. There'll be a reduction in the crowd. There'll be a reduction. There won't be as many Chelsea fans there. So how important are them making noise going to be? Um, well, that's not an advantage, uh, of course, because we want uh, we want to play uh, home matches and, and in general we, we want to play in front of a full stadium and, and the game is for, for the spectators and supporters. So that's bad news, actually. I was not aware of it. Uh, actually, maybe someone told me and I forgot it in, in the last days. This can it's also possible. So let's turn things around and maybe everybody is aware of that so everybody pushes a little bit more because uh, because we lack uh, quantity but but we should not lack quality of support so I can only remind everybody of of the of the match against Leicester last season after after the corona situation where like it was the first time where, where spectators were allowed at the bridge and it was like 15000 and it, it felt like uh, all the players said it felt like like a full stadium. So hopefully we can we can we can be the spark to 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 pr bring everybody um, uh, into that kind of mood to to give a little bit more than than normal. Um, I just want to ask about Trevor Chalobah. Um, mm. He's had a brilliant season, um, yeah. but we haven't seen much of him recently. Yeah. What's that? Is there a reason behind that? Is it to do with injuries or? No, it's, it's hard decisions at the moment. Uh, maybe he feels that these decisions are against him, but there are four other players. Um, we had uh, recently um, Rhys James playing in this position um, in, the, in, the, in, in the back three because of his physicality, of his speed against, um, against key players on the left side from, from opponents. Trevor uh, played a lot and played a very, very good season so far. He had a little bit of dip of, of, of form, some, but some weeks ago, and since many weeks he's, he's back in, in full shape and training, I have to say. We had a talk recently that he, he, I cannot prove it in the moment, or I, do, it's n I cannot prove it with minutes and game minutes, but he is exactly at the level where he was in the beginning of the season, which is impressive because he overcame this kind of period where things felt a bit more difficult for him like uh, during the winter period where he had some mistakes and was not so comfortable on the pitch like and so reliable like we were used to be which is also very normal but now he's back in full strength and he needs to be patient now we have Thiago in, in shape we have Andreas Christensen back from from injury Rees played on his position so these are actually the reasons pretty normal for me he's he's taking it very well he trains like I said he trains excellent and that's what we demand from him and uh, I think that we 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 will he will see it with minutes in the in the next matches. And just finally, you've spoken about Reese playing as that right centre back. Yeah. He was brilliant against Vinicius and against Wilfred Zaha. 
Zaha. He was so brilliant at the right wing back against Arsenal yeah, it's a earlier problem. in the season. It's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. Yes. So do you, what do you do with Reese James given he's so brilliant in both positions? I think that yeah, but I think that uh, the back three is a little bit less demanding physically like um, in comparison to the wing back position and given the fact that he comes from a long injury and uh, from a muscle injury for a re -inj from a re-injury over, over so many weeks it's a bit of an advantage to have him in the back three because it's less demanding physically and this is anyway the next step how many games can he play as a wing back if he plays wing back during a season reliable like on, on a level where he's decisive it's a bit less demanding physically um, in terms of accelerations, long accelerations and high speed on the, on the, on the back three. And, and that helps us to have him on the pitch for more minutes and that's why he plays in there. He can play both positions brilliantly and it's a, yeah, it's a, we only have him once so we need to decide but that's the reason at the moment. Last question in the broadcast section, Nick. So, so on Reese. Sorry, so Reece, you see, you think his best position is wing back, and I just wondered about Jorginho. Not uh, sure. No, is this so that still I love him in both positions. Okay. I have to say, it reminds, yeah. yeah. And just, just on, on Jorginho, obviously, um, we know how tough you are on the players in, in matches, and, and they understand that there was, you know, you were sort of yeah. urging him on, having words. Um, how do you see where he is at the moment? Because obviously he's had a few injury issues, hasn't he, in the season? He's played injured and. Yeah, he played injured, he sacrificed for the team and I, I think you see it now and uh, you can never underestimate like how, how much, uh, how much um, like pressure is also on the player in the national team in a country like if you play for Italy where the demands are high and after, after big success uh, like winning the Euros, I, I think he really felt, felt the pressure there. I think everybody in Italy for the national team felt the pressure. Um, which is which is normal, and it's sometimes like after big success, it's very very difficult to to keep on going and keep on going. And he had also like he he put a lot of responsibility naturally on his shoulders because he's never shy to do so. He is uh, never shy to do it here, and that's why why I love him. I, it's true I was like very hard on him him uh, during the match because he had some. Uh, situations where I think he could do better and he normally does better but it's never personal between us I love Georgie I, uh, I know that he knows it and um, and we see now that we overused him we overused him and we see a bit I, I, I have the feeling that we see the consequences of this huge amount of matches and if he plays he he's always fully involved he gives everything he, he plays with a lot of effort and he needs to be absolutely fresh to have the influence that he normally has. He is not on his, yeah, mentally, physically, not on the in the freshest moment at the, at the moment, minute, and that is not to blame on. He's not to blame for, but it's just like a fact where how I analyze it. And uh, yeah, he had some two, three situations where he could do better, but uh, nothing personal and and uh, nothing that stands between us. Okay, in the broadcast, cameras off, please.